How many times do you have to tell your partner to take out the trash every single week? So you're trying to teach them through an auditory memory. You're hoping that they're going to learn by hearing your voice. But let's say they're a visual learner. So you may think that they don't listen. And the truth is they are listening. That's just not how they remember. That's just not how they learn. And so you keep reminding them every single week. You feel unheard. You feel like they don't care about you. You have to know they're learning stuff. Hey everyone, welcome back to On Purpose, the number one health podcast in the world, thanks to each and every single one of you. Now I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has left a review. We have over 12,000 reviews now, it's incredible. If you have a moment, it would mean so much to me. If you go in and leave a review for us, it makes such a big difference to having new people come and find the podcast and listen to it and making sure that people know about the incredible conversation conversations we have here every single week. Now, today's podcast and episode is all about learning. Learning, learning, learning. And I really believe that learning is such a huge, huge, huge part of our lives. And there are some incredible thoughts that I want to share with you about learning today, because it's funny that we try to learn about a lot of things, but we never learn how to learn. We try and learn a lot of things, but we never figure out how to learn better. We've never learned how to learn. And that in and of itself becomes a big, big challenge. Now, one of my favorite statements from Alvin Toffler is this, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. There is such an emphasis here on the process of learning, unlearning, and relearning from Alvin Toffler. And I absolutely love that quote, but just think about that for a moment. Through our whole lives, we've been expected to learn. We've been expected to learn fast, but we never learn how to learn. Now, why is learning important? Right now, you might be thinking, Jay, why do we have to talk about learning? I'm going to skip this podcast. I'm about to turn it off. I'm about to switch it off. Well, I will convince you in the next 20 seconds that you need to listen to the whole of this podcast. So listen to this. I was reading the CCSU Continued Education website. And what I like to do is, if I'm trying to tell you why I think it's important to learn, rather than tell you the benefits of learning, I want to actually share with you the disadvantages of not learning. Because often when we learn about what might go wrong, it actually enthuses us and energizes us more than learning about what might go right. It's a weird psychological thing that we have in the mind, right? We're triggered by that response of like, oh, I don't want it to go badly, so I'm going to do it right. So listen. Listen to this from the CCSU Continued Education. It says, a British research study showed that being bored, which occurs when you don't learn new things very often, and I'll come back to that, can be dangerous to your health. People in the study who reported being bored over a long period of time had heart disease rates more than twice as high as those who did not report boredom. We've already learned something huge. What have we learned? that the opposite of learning is boredom. The opposite of boredom is learning. So if you're like, gee, I've been feeling bored. Maybe you've even heard that song, I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored, right? If you've been using TikTok at this time. So many people today are bored or we're procrastinating or we're overthinking. And all of that is because of a lack of learning. See, if you notice something about being bored, it feels like you're stagnant and it feels you like you're stuck and it feels like you're trapped in the moment. How many of you agree with that? Right? How many of you agree that when you're bored, it kind of feels like you're stopped, like you're blocked, right? You feel, you feel stuck. And if you notice procrastination or overthinking as well, it kind of feels like you're just going through a spiral, learning cuts right through that. Learning is about movement. Learning is about momentum. Learning is about pushing forward. And so boredom, the antidote to boredom is actually learning. And also recognize here, it's dangerous to your health to not learn. It's dangerous to your health and your mind and your brain. And we're talking about heart disease rates more than twice as high as those who do not report boredom. Now, an Inc. article by Brian Wong 
And the same, he's, he's also looking at a study in the CCSU business and development, right? And this is what he finds, that practicing a new skill increases the density of your myelin or the white matter in your brain that helps improve performance on a number of tasks. It goes on to say, additionally, learning new skills stimulates neurons in the brain, which forms more neural pathways and allows electrical impulses to travel faster across them. The combination of these two things help you learn better, and it can even help you stay away from dementia. And this is the challenge that we find that, especially as we get older, we stop learning. If you think about it, when we were at school, we learned every day. Then if you went to college or you started a new job, you were learning every day. But as we get older and older and older, we actually stop learning. Think about the last time you learned something new. Think about the last time you learned something for the first time. It's, it's rare that we continue to learn, and yet there is such a need for us to learn every single day, from our careers to our relationships. There is a need to learn more all the time. Technology is advancing so fast. Careers are changing every single day. There's so many careers that exist today that will disappear in the next 10 years. And it's not just things like farming or agricultural work. It also includes telephone operators, computer processors, typists, people even talking about legal and accounting work. It's incredible to think of how technology will replace so many roles and jobs as well. So there is such a need for us to be continuous learners. It's so important. Now, you may be sitting there just going like, Jay, you know what? I've tried. I've really tried in my time to learn more. I've really tried in my time to understand more. And I really struggle, right? You're like, Jay, I don't like reading. You know, it's really not my thing. Now, I remember when I was at primary school, we were always having to read fiction books. And I remember some of the most popular fiction books when I was young were Goosebumps. And you may remember Goosebumps and the TV show as well. And I enjoyed watching the TV show. It was okay, but I didn't really get into the books, but I remember they had cool covers. And I remember trying to read them, but just never feeling connected. And then I remember also being exposed, of course, when I was young, Harry Potter was, was huge. And again, like I never really got into the books and I know that's really deep for some of you to accept, but it's true. And so, so many of us might be thinking right now, like, yeah, I just don't like learning. I don't like reading. And the thing we say is instead of saying we don't like reading or we don't like writing or we don't like a specific type, we just say, I don't like learning or I don't enjoy learning. And a lot of this comes because we associate the word learning with school or college. Now, think about this really, really honestly and, and reflect really openly on this. How many of you struggled at school or college? Like how many of you genuinely did not like going to class, right? You hated going to the classroom. You probably never got along with your teachers or maybe even if you got along with them, you never learned anything. And maybe some of you are like, wow, I studied three languages and now I don't remember even how to say hello in that language, right? Or I studied so much about this subject and it wasn't even useful, and that's usually how a lot of us feel about education, that even those of us who went to college or went to school, we look back and we just think, well, what do I use from that? And how many of you feel like you don't even remember it or you don't even apply it today? Why this is a challenge is because, of course, our relationship with learning was built with our relationship with school because school was the place we learned. But you'll find that people who had parents who traveled with them or parents who taught them about general knowledge or parents who listened to music and spoke about artists at home, you'll find that because their learning was also linked to a parent, they actually are inspired by learning. They're engaged in the learning process. But for a lot of us who connected learning just to school, it's actually quite limiting. Now, one of the biggest reasons for this, and when I understood this myself, I just realized how many limiting beliefs I had because I didn't have an awareness of what learning truly was. And what I realized is that school 
was not built for different learning styles. In the same way that people write differently, just in the same way as people speak differently, just in the same way as people think differently, guess what? People learn differently. You learn differently. And I don't even know if you've ever stopped to think about what your learning style is. I don't know if you've ever even stopped to recognize how you learn better so that you can learn more, remember more, apply more, make a difference more, or whether you just try and follow along, right? Now, chances are that if you listen to the podcast regularly, which I'm really grateful that you do, there's a specific style of learning that you really thrive off. And that's really, really powerful. And that's why we also see the rise in audiobooks now. So there are a lot of people who don't read books, but they'll listen to books. Or some people like reading a book while they listen to a book. I personally like doing that. It's a, it's a fun process. But it's incredible that we think we're not smart because we don't do something with the right awareness. We think we don't like something because we haven't really truly explored it. So psychology shows that there are four types of learning styles, four different types. And when I was looking into this, some of you may already know this, some of you may have heard this before, but the question I would ask you is not whether you know this, it's whether you know your learning style deeply, and I'm gonna go deeper today, and whether you understand, if you're a teacher, if you know the learning styles of your students, if you're a coach, or you're a guide, or you're a fitness trainer, or you're a speaker, and if you're an entrepreneur, do you know the learning style of your client, right? If you're working in an office, do you know the learning style of your colleagues? Do you know the learning style of your boss? Notice how knowing someone's learning style, yours and someone else's, is not just about whether you can learn more or not. It's whether you can be a better communicator at work. It's whether you're going to make things easier for your boss or your manager and for the people that work with you. There is so much more to it than just knowing the learning style. So even if you've heard this before, open up your mind. Realize that unless you know how to apply this in multiple areas of your life, you are limiting yourself consistently. So here are the four learning styles. The first learning styles, and this comes in the form of the acronym VARC, as it's known. Uh, I didn't come up with this. It's a psychological breakdown of different learning styles. It's V-A-R-K. The V stands for visual learners, learners who like to look at charts and graphs and doodles and drawings and images, right? People who need to see something to learn and remember it. Often we talk about something like a photographic memory, where if you see a page, you can remember that page and you learn better through seeing things visually, right? And you think about in school, a lot of us didn't really get much visual learning. And if you remember what you do remember from class, it pr might have been visual, right? There might have been visuals in what you remember things. And notice why when you try and remember something visually that you saw, you close your eyes, you're like, oh, what did it look like? Notice it's like, what, you just close your eyes for and you're like, what did it look like? Oh yeah, that's what it looked like. And you can see it when you close your eyes because you almost have to stop triggering that sense to be able to visualize something from the past. But a lot of us are visual learners. And the thing about learning styles is not that we just have one and we don't use others. The point is we can strengthen what we learn. So some of you may write down and make notes while you do it so you can look at something after the podcast is over. Some of you may get a screenshot and write a quote on top of it, right? Some of you may stick it on your walls to make it visual. I know that at one point in time, and I'm definitely visual is a big part of mine, I used to put like things stuck on my wall, things that inspired me, paragraphs, inspirational quotes, chapters of a book, whatever it was, I'd photocopy the pages and stick them on my wall when I was younger so that they would be front of mind for me. So that's visual learners. To ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, how much do you think you're a visual learner? On a scale of one to 10, where would you put yourself? Okay. And I want you to do this practically. Get a pen out right now. Write it down. If you don't write it down, this is not going to stick with you, right? Write it down. Visual. Remember when everyone would say YOLO because of that Drake song? YOLO is short for you only live once. Now, by the way, I absolutely love Drake, but thinking this way can be very useful in driving you towards seeking adventure and taking more risk. Just having more fun and not being too concerned with the future. 
But instead of repeating YOLO, I meditate on what if I lived forever? Not in a physical sense, but my message, my truth, my actions. Thinking this way has driven me to make the most out of my days and constantly improve who I am at my core. I believe firmly that no one improves without learning. That's why I make it a priority to always learn something new, regardless of the topic. Learning about various perspectives changes your personality and grows you as an individual. Never look at learning as a chore or something you have to do. It's something you're blessed to have. Remember, your ancestors never had access to this amount of resources, but you do. This is why I encourage you to check out The Great Courses Plus. It's a streaming service that is an outstanding resource to expand your knowledge on a variety of fields. You'll always leave with amazing insights from some of the world's best teachers. You could trade up watching a movie and stream a course to your TV to watch as a family. The Great Courses Plus app lets you listen and learn from anywhere, anytime. No reason to not be improving. I've always found the relationship between humans and dogs to be so interesting. Simply allowing my curiosity to direct me, I started the course called Ask a Dog Trainer. And within 10 minutes, I feel like I know so much. My next course is going to be Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, Techniques for Retraining Your Brain, which goes into practical techniques for modifying undesirable behavior and managing our moods. As you see, no shortage of classes. Learning doesn't have to be heavy or stressful. It's just an opportunity to expand your knowledge and relate to the world around you. So whether you like history, animals, math, or just looking to pick up a new hobby, The Great Courses Plus will deliver. There's so much more to learn about the world. Start by signing up for The Great Courses Plus. They're offering my listeners a free month of unlimited access. To start your free month trial, sign up today using my special URL. Go now to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash J. Remember, that's thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash J. Many, many people come to me and ask me the same question. Jay, I feel stuck in life. What should I do? You've probably heard a lot of advice on this, but today I think this is a different approach to that question. How about starting with the journey of uncovering your family's history? Regardless of your current state of mind, learning about your ancestors will only enhance your sense of well-being, presence, and belonging. Being able to research your family's origins, in my opinion, is one of the most innovative ways to find out what you should do. They may inspire you through a career they had or through an interest they had or from a country that they traveled to or were from. This is why I love Ancestry DNA. It's very simple to use. And Ancestry DNA tells you where your ancestors are from and Ancestry's billions of records and millions of family trees let you discover their personal stories. The stories you learn about your shared past will only bring you closer to yourself and your family. One concept remains true throughout my research of the human mind. Having a deeper sense of where you come from and deep meaningful relationships help you relate better to the world. Taking an ancestry DNA test is a great tool that I recommend you all to use. Start exploring your family story today Head to my URL at Ancestry.com forward slash J to get your Ancestry DNA kit and start your free trial. That's a free trial at Ancestry.com forward slash J. Okay, the second is auditory. So this is what I meant. If you listen to podcasts regularly, if you like Audible regularly, you probably like learning through listening. And I think learning through listening is an incredible technique because listening is something you can do while running, you can do it while cooking, you can do it while driving. It's a really, really powerful way to learn and grow. And it's also powerful because it's kind of happening and you can kind of latch on to a point that really has an impact on you or that really connects with you, especially if the person sharing the message is really enthusiastic about what they're sharing. But auditory makes sense. It's basically like you learn from listening. And that's why audiobooks, podcasts are becoming so popular today because people realize that they actually like doing something with their hands, like whether they're driving or they're working out or whether they're cooking, but then they can still learn. So you probably have a high auditory. Again, on a scale of one to 10, which level are you at? And some of you may even say, Jay, you know, sometimes I listen to your podcast twice. Like I listen to the video that you made or the podcast that you made twice or three times. That shows that you're a keen auditory listener and learner. It's really powerful to remember that. 
And also it's really important to remember when you're the best auditory. Like I see myself as quite an auditory person, but if I've got my phone in my hand, And my auditory sense is really inactive. So then if my wife or my team is trying to say something to me, it may not register as much because I'm so engaged. So it's really important to recognize if you're an auditory learner and what level are you on a scale of one to 10. Now, the third one is reading and writing. How many of you need to make notes when you're listening right now? Notice how you can still learn by listening but you like to read and write. You have to put something down, pen on paper, when you're listening, and that strengthens your ability. So you may be an auditory learner, but you're also a reading and writing learner. How many of you need to scribble stuff down? How many of you need to write it? I know for a fact that when I write something down, it stays with me longer. So even speaking, and that's auditory too, auditory is listening and speaking, When you speak something, that also means you hold on to it. And obviously you're going to be all of these, but I want you to rank again, reading and writing on a scale of one to 10. And where are you on that? So when you're reading a book, you may highlight, you may underline, you may copy something out of that book. That puts you in the reading, writing category. And right now you may be listening to this and going, Jay, I don't do any of these. Like I just, I literally just watch stuff. Or I just listen, but I don't go further. And that's the parts that will improve your learning. And finally, you have kinesthetic, like interactive learners. People who have to mess around with something, play something. It's like a Rubik's Cube. It's like pottery. It's like problem solving, like crystal maze. Like you actually have to do something with your hands and your feet and your mind and interactively be involved to see it make a difference. And a lot of these things obviously include things like learning instruments or learning how to dance, but... Also even problem solving skills or math. Like, I don't know if you've seen those viral videos of the teachers who teach the degrees and angles based on where the door is when you're walking in to a classroom. Like things like that, where it's so interactive, right? It kind of brings it all together. It's the kinesthetic learners. And you may be thinking, wow, I'm really lacking that kinesthetic learning in my life. And that's what I'm hoping that when you're listening to this, you're like, oh, no wonder I thought I didn't like learning because... I just keep like reading and I really struggle with it. It doesn't do it for me or, you know, all I do is listen, but then I don't write it down or I don't make it visual. So those are the four types, visual, auditory, reading, kinesthetic. It's known as the VARC model. And I would really make sure that you know yours and you know the people around you. How many times do you have to tell your partner to take out the trash every single week? And you have to tell them, Guess what? So you're trying to teach them through an auditory memory. You're hoping that they're going to learn by hearing your voice. But let's say they're a visual learner. They need a visual cue above the trash. They need a visual cue next to the dining table or the kitchen, wherever it is. They need a visual reminder. So you may think that they don't listen. And the truth is they are listening. That's just not how they remember. That's just not how they learn. And so you keep reminding them every single week, you feel unheard, you feel like they don't care about you. You have to know their learning style, right? You have to know their learning style. Or for example, you may find that you keep visual cues from your partner around the house. Like you may give them a calendar invite or a diary, which is kind of like them being reading or writing, but actually they need a kinesthetic reminder, which means that, they may need a reminder where they have to actively read and write it down, right? They may need to actually do the writing. You're trying to do it for them, but they actually need to be physically involved. So actually they remember when they read and write, not when you put it in their calendar for them, but when they put it in their calendar themselves. Notice how learning styles is beyond just having good memory. This is far more than just, I read a book and I remember what's inside it. This is practical life skills as to why we make mistakes every single day that don't change, right? You may be wondering like why your partner just doesn't change, why your colleague just doesn't change. It's because you don't know their learning style. And I really want you to help them explore it and explore it yourself as well. Now, there are two additional types of learning style that I think apply across the board. So they almost are ways of dividing it. So you are either VARK in a specific order and you gave yourself a rank. So your rank is the order that you are. So I want you to write it down. So V, what were you one out of 10? If you were really 
a visual thinker, then you're 10. If you're not, then you're one. Same with auditory, same with reading, same with kinesthetic. What is your order of learning? So remember, you're all, you learn in all styles, but what's your order? Are you K-R-A-V? Are you V-A-R-K? You know, which, which order are you in? It's really important to know that. My friend called me earlier this month and told me she was feeling down because of how she feels about her body. She's been trying to work out. She's been trying to eat healthy. All of the usual stuff that you're trying to do when you want to, you know, improve your fitness and your wellness, but she doesn't feel she knows how to really organize it, how to start, how to measure it correctly. And that just makes her feel down. Now, I'm sure you felt this way. I know that I felt this way in my life. And I share this today because I realize we all have goals, but often we don't make the right choices. We have to know the psychology behind the decisions you make and where to start. Now, if you've ever battled with getting in shape, this is for you. Our friends over at Noom understand it's all about building healthier habits and feeling better about yourself. Noom understands fitness is more than just a few push-ups. It's about accountability and psychology too. It starts with the mind. What makes them unique from the rest is that Noom doesn't tell you what to do and what not to do. It teaches you how to look inside your own mind and make better decisions for yourself. Well, back to my friend. I've got great news to share. She started her journey with Noom and has already seen improvements. Not only physically, but mentally, stronger sense of self-worth, better mood, less stress and anxiety. She built the habit of tracking what she eats and of trusting herself to make good choices moving forward. I love sharing stories like this because it means it's possible for anyone, and I hope I get to share your story next time. You don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps lead to big progress. Sign up for your trial today at noom.com forward slash purpose. That's noom, spelt N-O-O-M dot com forward slash purpose. What do you have to lose? Visit noom.com forward slash purpose to start your trial today. But now the last question you have to ask yourself is, are you a solitary learner or are you a social learner? Remember, this is not about being an introvert or an extrovert. It's about where you learn better. Do you learn in groups or do you learn one-to-one or in silence? So I know that I will learn really, really well with private tuition, like one-on-one, personal trainer, fitness trainer, coaches. I really appreciate that one-to-one training. But a lot of people, and this is important because it's an order again, need community need to be around other people to learn, right? They need that connection. I also learn a lot when I'm sitting on my own and learning. So it's really important. Are you a solitary learner alone or are you a social learner? Do you learn better with people? Again, this is just high self-awareness and really important awareness for your team as well because you might find that they're not learning, right? Because you're always asking them to learn things on their own. You're just like, go ahead, go learn on your own as opposed to learning in a group with a brainstorm. I really want you to understand that, like I said, so you're either a solitary learner or a social learner. Now, how do you know? Ask yourself when you felt like you really understood something. Were you learning it when you were just reading on your own? You were reflecting? You were maybe in nature? Or did you hold on to it better because you were discussing it? You remember that last conversation you had over dinner or on a Zoom call or you know, when you were speaking with a bunch of people about an issue and it really left a impression on your mind. Again, really powerful to reflect on when you learn more. See, what this does is it builds your confidence in making you realize that you are a learner. You just learn differently to other people. Otherwise, we all grew up believing, oh, I'm academic or I'm not academic. And it's like, academic is the wrong word because we all need to learn. There's no one in the world who doesn't need to learn but knowing how you learn makes it really easy for you. Now, I've been reading a book called The Psychology Book. It's, it's, it's great. I really enjoy it. And there's a psychologist named Herman Ebbinghaus who said that 24 hours after learning something, we forget two thirds of it. And you may be thinking, well, why would I ever choose to learn then? Right? Why would I ever choose to learn? But listen to this carefully. Items forgotten, this is what his research suggested from the psychology book. Items forgotten can be relearned faster than new ones, which means that if you 
read something and forgot it, but read it again, you're more likely to remember it. So the process is repetition. This is why repetition and practice are so important. It's said that we need to read something seven times before we remember it. It's why often the number seven is used in advertising, where you'll find that it is in seven different places. It will be on a billboard, a TV ad, a mobile ad, a social media ad. It will be announced by your favorite celebrity and it will be on the sidewalk, right? You'll see it in seven places, which will confirm that you want to make that purchase. So that's why the repetition of something is so powerful for you. So you don't need to think, oh, well, I didn't remember it last time, so there's no point in me looking at it again. Actually, your repeat attendance is what makes you remember it. So don't think of repetition as a failure. Think of repetition as strengthening. We think of repetition as like, oh, I failed last time, that's why I'm having to do it again. Actually, if you really want to remember it, then keep doing it again makes it powerful. He also found that mastering, like overlearning, means you remembered longer. So it's not that it's not that your memory is weak if you don't learn the first time. For most of us to really remember something, we have to do it multiple times. So we have the wrong perception around learning. We think if we don't learn something the first time after we hear it, then that means our memory is weak. It means that we're not smart. It means that it's not meant for us. It means that we're not passionate about it. That's not true. The truth is repetition is what creates long-term memory. So don't think of that. And that's mind-blowing for me right now as I'm sharing that with you. Like, do not think that because you didn't get something straight away that it's not for you, right? So items forgotten can be relearned faster than new ones. Overlearning makes you remember it longer. And here's something really fascinating that he found. This is Herman Ebbinghaus in the psychology book. Meaningful things are remembered 10 times longer. If someone has the same name as your niece or your daughter or your son, if someone has the same birthday as yours, if someone is the same star sign as you, if someone worked at the same company as you, all of those things, because they're meaningful, you remember them more. So my task for you, next time you want to remember something is, how can you make it meaningful? How can you make it meaningful? What adds meaning to that? How does it become personally connected to you? How does it become personally intertwined with you? So when I'm reading a book or I'm reading about a particular event or a particular theme, I'm trying to apply that to something in my life. For example, I read about this concept called satisficing, which is where you simplify your life in a way so that you can do an activity with more focus, right? So the example that's given in that book, The Organized Mind by Daniel Levitin, is of Warren Buffett and how when he's investing in stocks, he'll simplify his life where he'll live in an apartment in New York. He'll only drink milk and cookies, and he'll be learning about stocks all week or researching that all week. So he simplifies his life so he can focus. So that story I remember, and then I asked myself, well, when have I done that? So I think about writing my book last year. I think about sometimes researching for my podcasts, like all that time. And then you can remember that theme because it's connected to something meaningful to you. Right? So ask yourself, how can I make this meaningful? How can I connect it to my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister? How can I connect it to my best friend? How can I connect it to a name or a number? All of those things are going to make it easier to remember something. And finally, applied learning is the best learning. When you share something that you've learned, when you teach it, when you live it and apply it, you remember it much, much, much more. And that's what I'm always asking myself. When I learn something new, I'm like, how can I test this for the next week so that I learn it even more and learn it even deeper and learn it even better? So that's how I want you to approach the learning process. I know that a lot of people are feeling bored right now. I know a lot of people are not feeling inspired, are not feeling passionate, and it all comes back down to learning. That's the womb, that's the beginning point of all of it, is learning and curiosity. So if you're like, Jay, I don't know what my passion is. Jay, I don't know what my purpose is. Those are far off, but learning and curiosity is where it starts. 
right? Learning and curiosity is where it starts. And Leonardo da Vinci said, learning is the only thing the mind never exhausts, never fears, and never regrets, right? And Albert Einstein said, once you stop learning, you start dying. Such powerful statements from some of the most powerful minds in the world about learning. Not about learning something specific, but about learning in general. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of On Purpose. I want you to share your biggest takeaway on Instagram. Tag me at Jay Shetty. I can't wait to see what you've learned from this podcast all about learning. Thank you so much for listening. Please leave a review. It makes a huge difference to the podcast. I hope you've subscribed as well and share this with a friend so that you two can learn together. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. Take care and I'll see you again next week for an incredibly exciting guest.